Are you still using Figma? Well, stop and watch this video. Today we're talking about a new piece of software called Pixo.net and I really love Pixo 2.0 launch. And I love the fact that there is a lifetime plan. So you're paying once, you're not paying monthly. And as always, I'll have links in the description below, but let me show you how this actually works. So we are on our dashboard now and we can see my recent file. We can click here, we can click open. And it's gonna open up this user interface here and it looks complex, but let me just kind of take you through it real quick. So in the top left, we can rename our file. We can hit the drop down. We can see a version history on the right. So we can see the different history that we have. So this is actually just a template I grabbed and there is an incredible number of templates as well, but I just want to quickly briefly show you how it works and then we can do more of a deep dive. So anyway, we have our pages here and you can see like the change log page. We can see templates, how they look, we can see buttons, what it'll look on our application. It is absolutely incredible, all the different pages. We also have layers, so we can click layers and we can see all the different layers. So we can see wallet, design, we can change the background. We can click any part of this. So say we want to pick our text here, we can actually see on the right, more additional options and features. So let me just kind of like move myself out of the way here for a second. And we can see like selection of colors, we can add effects. And if we add an effect, we can actually hit the play button up here and it will play back and animate for us. So I guess the question is, you're probably asking, what do you need this for? And if you've never used Figma before, it's the idea that you can design these wireframes and then you can pass it off to a coder or a developer and they can develop whatever you have properly. And we can use AI for pretty much all of this, but they also have this little toggle here. So we can switch from dev view over into like design view. So if you notice we're in dev view and everything kind of changes because we are now a developer and we can see the language of like the web, maybe we want to see Android and we can do that as well. And we can change it from pixels to whatever. There's a lot of options here. The options are pretty much endless and you can see what it looks like. We can also share this. We can see here, there is like additional plugins that we can add. There's like community plugins and we can search and add plugins and we can like zoom in, zoom out. There's, like I said, there's a lot of different options. Now let's jump to the AI stuff because that's where the really fun is. Switch back and up here, there is this icon here. This is the AI assistant. We can click that and now we can ask it a question. So we can say, hey, we need a language assistant or AI inspiration or design guideline generator. So maybe we don't know design very well or we wanna use a AI generated design. Say, hey, language assistant. So we can optimize like text on our page. We can also go back. We can say, hey, AI inspiration. So we can say, hey, can you help us design something. So maybe like a form review and we want to get feedback or whatever we want. We can change it to like a random name or we want user feedback on the speed of the large language model. So it says, Hey, here's several user reviews that focus on the speed of large language models. And it's going to say review one, and it's going to give us actual text that we can use now within our frame. So we can just like quickly copy this over into our wireframe here and just kind of use that. So I'm just gonna exit out of this real quick and you can see we can generate names, we can generate compliments. It's just like inspiration, it's like content we can add to our design. We can also use the AI assistant to design things on this page. So say we wanna do like a design element checklist, we can click that and even gives us some examples. So like 404, a reset, Pay password or login and sign up. So we say login and sign up. It's actually going to give us a checklist to say, Hey, do you have all these features on your page? What are you missing? So you can see here, like a clear call to action and an input field, the password visibility, and we can go through and we can check off the things that we have, or we can uncheck the things that we don't have. So it's able to enter a prompt and say, Hey, these are the things we need on our page. We can also use the AI for like design guidelines. So we can say, hey, what's our primary color? Or say we wanna make like a online travel platform and we can hit generate. It is going to generate this for us. So now we have an actual palette that we can look at and use. So we can say, okay, this palette looks pretty good. This is what we want. We can pick like radius and spacing and we can say, okay, this is good. Can you create the style in the current file? So now we have this file or we can generate a static file and we're able to use these in our file now. You can see here we have like color, shadow, radius, spacing, so on and so forth. So let's go back to page one and let's see if we can design 
our large language model ourself. So we can go to the rectangle tool, we can add like a side menu with a chat. So we can say like, hey, this is our list of LLMs. So on the right, we have a bunch of options. We can adjust this, we can change the layer, we can change the text itself. So we can say, okay, what kind of text do we want? Let's go for this one here and let's make it a little bit bigger. So maybe that's, maybe that's a little too big, but you get the idea. It's the point is you can start designing what you want here and you can kind of see what this looks like. So we're going to copy this and we're going to just kind of bring it down and we can bring in our models now. So we say we have like chat GPT and Gemini and Grok and whatever else we are going to use. So let's just include Claude. So we have our models. I don't want them to be this big because the models are as big as the title. So let's change the size and here are our models here. And maybe we wanna add bullets or whatever you wanna do. So you can kind of see we have our side menu. So we are starting to have it come together here. We can add like another rectangle or maybe we want something rounded. We can insert a picture we can like say, okay, we're gonna have a ton of different models. So maybe this is the one they want start. So let's just kind of move this over and we have a star system now and we wanna fill our star. So let's just kind of click here. We're gonna fill it in. So we have now a star system on our model and we can just keep adding and keep expanding and just making it better. So we can like use the morph tool or edit the object and everything we do on here, we can like, you see this object here that we have, we can add a background color. So this is our like prompt area where they're gonna enter in text and you can kind of see it here. We're gonna just put it nice across, but everything we do, we can even right click and there is even more settings, more options. And again, you can go to this AI assistant, say, hey, we need a design element checklist for a chat system with multiple LLMs and we can hit start and it's going to make a checklist based off what we have, what we want and it is wild. So we have our user interface, user onboarding, a chat window layout, a selection dropdown. So that's like it here and message input fields. We have that. Oh, we don't have our send button. So we need to do that. Do we want chat history? So there's all these different options that we can add and see just based off this tool. That's going to say, Hey, these are the things you're missing. So now you can see we added our red send button. I can like morph this however I want. I can make it look kind of cool. There's so many options that you can do. So you don't have to have it just as a straight box. As you can tell, we can make it like whatever. So again, I can add the text. I can just copy that over and you can see it is behind the other layer. So this you can't see, we're going to come over here on the left and we're just going to like move our layer on top. So there is our send button and it doesn't look great. Let's change the fill color, maybe make it white. Boom. We are starting to build something that we can actually use for our multiple large language models. Now let's assume for a second, I have a lot of skill that we can make like really nice layouts that like this, we can actually just jump to the code model. We can see the padding. We can see different code. We can see pixels. We can actually see the layouts. We can like copy the CSS. If we want, we can copy the style. You can click any part. So we can like click this here and we can see the CSS of just this text, or we can click here and we can see the CSS and layout of this text. Chances are you don't want to do that. So when we are on the dev view, you see code here in the top, right? We can go to slice and now we can actually like export our slices as whatever we want. So, so we want them as PNG files or SVG files or whatever we want, we can export it. So we can export it as SVG, PNG, we can compress the image. We can export the like current page, the one page we're on. We can export all the pages. We can see all the slices on the current page and you can kind of see them all. Look at all the different rectangles and everything. So we can actually just quickly say export and we can export it out. So you can actually see here, we just have a PNG file now of our page. We can now use this and upload it to a large language model and say, hey, can you replicate this and turn this into a functional page? So let's give that a go. So we are on Google Gemini. You can see here, I have my prompt. I wanna use a chat system where you can pick different large language models and chat with them. I want real working chats. And then, and then we're gonna add, keep the UI exactly how you see it in this image. So it's going to look at our image and imagine this was a little bit more complex. We can use exactly what we created using Pixos and bring it into Gemini and check this out. Hello, I am Gemini, a large language model, and we can now talk. Hello, and it is thinking, how can I help you today? Check this out. That is what it created. This was our original. It looks exactly the same. It has our little 
star icon. It didn't really understand that it was supposed to be stars, but this is a demo and it only supports Gemini, which is still pretty cool considering Gemini actually works. Can we acknowledge as well that the send button looks pretty awesome? Like the little pops of red look great. So we went from like design to app pretty quickly. If we're on this page here, before we import anything, we can go to explore community, which is going to bring you to this page here, which is like the resource community page. You can search, there is so much. You can see like plugins, you can see different things people have made. There is almost like an infinite list of stuff, like the number of pages and the number of designs. So like, say we want a landing page, we can click this and we can just say, hey, copy the eight and poof, we are now working with the landing page. Like I said, there's so much going on here. There's a lot, but I, again, I love the idea that it's a single price, not monthly. I'm gonna show you one other AI feature that they have, which is absolutely incredible. If you're on pixels.ai, you can also get this chat system here and we can like type in, you can see different things that it has created and we can like click it. We can see like, hey, this is the lab academy that it made, or maybe we want a healthy dashboard and you can see the animations, it looks awesome. So I have gone ahead and put in a prompt. I want to create a chat system where you can pick different models and chat with them. I want a real working chats, keep the UI exactly how you see it in the image, analyze, blah, blah, blah. So it just basically gave the same prompt we gave into Gemini here. Just kind of lazy, could have given more information, but I didn't. We can see the key features implemented. We can see like modern UI interface, and this is what it looks like. So this is what it gave us, and we can see our different chats. We can like scroll down, we can see it like thinking, we can see who we're talking to, our name, this is John Doe, and it looks really good. We can see new chat settings, and we can like expand this out. We can say, okay, this is what we want to see. This is the whole entire thing. The really cool part is we can actually click code and check this out. We have an entire HTML code that we can start with. So now we can copy this code. Let's come back to Gemini. Let's create a new chat. We added the code. We said, hey, implement a working Gemini model. You can talk to you in this. And it is going to generate a working version of what we just designed, but you can actually talk to Gemini. And it's gonna say, hey, hello, I'm Gemini, we can talk. So this one is just a test and you can see it's just kind of random. So I'd like have some random text in there. Hello, interesting point, blah, blah, blah. It said, what is 83 times two? It's just basically repeating back what we said, but it's kind of cool as a demo. But on Gemini, we can actually get this working. So you can see it here. We can even share this out with other people. But if we go to Gemini, it says, hello, I'm Gemini. We can say hi, and you can actually see it pop up. How are you? So let's ask it the same question. What is 83 times two? And it should answer us properly. So 166 is correct. So now we have a working version. You can see the mountains in the background. It's chatting properly. You can kind of like flip to different models that other models won't work, but it's the idea that you can like flip to the Gemini model and we have something that we basically designed using AI in Pixo. We brought it to Gemini, copied the code over and said, hey, make this, make it real, make it work. And it is really, really nice. I think this looks really nice. What are your thoughts? I think it looks really nice, but let me know in the comments below. New chat settings need some work. It doesn't work yet, but we can just prompt it in and say, hey, make it. Or even better yet, we can come to Pixo and say, hey, we need another page for settings. We need another page for a new chat. Or what does it look like when you do a new chat? And it will code the UI for us and it makes a really good looking UI and it works similar to Figma. I'm more of a developer than a designer, but I've still dabbled in Figma because I kind of have to. And as someone who's used Figma, I much prefer Pixos. So anyway, that's just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Love to know what you think. If you guys enjoy this content, don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis. Don't forget to like the video because it tells the algorithm you enjoy this type of content and you want to see more of it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video. to be